Hi everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing the standard size cincher from Dark Garden Signature Collection. So here's the front, side, back, and the other side. The center front of this corset is 11 inches high. Uh, the princess seam from under the breast to the top of the lap here is about nine and a half inches. The side seam is a tiny bit shorter at nine inches. And then the back of this corset in the center back, it is 10 inches high. And for the circumferential measurements, I'm wearing a size 22 today. And the under bust measurement is about 28 inches in circumference. That is measured a little bit over four inches above the waistline. And then the hip area that's measured five inches below the waistline is, uh, it measures 32 inches in circumference. So speaking of proportion, this corset offers a 6 inch rib spring and a 10 inch hip spring, which is a fairly decent amount of curve for a ready to wear standard size corset. Uh, so I would consider this to be a, an hourglass silhouette. It's not super, super dramatic and the bones in the size are not uh, bent so much that it causes a, a super tapered straight rib cage. I feel a little bit of cupping here. It pulls in my lower rib cage a little bit, but it's not uh, super dramatic. So I would consider this a decent hourglass silhouette. So here's the dark garden cincher laid flat and for the materials the fashion fabric of this one is this gorgeous uh, black diamond silk and rayon brocade and then on the inside for the strength fabric you can see that has this densely woven uh, canvas like I had shown in the previous corselet review. And here's what the Dark Garden label looks like in the center here. So you can see their logo, their name, uh, the size, made in San Francisco, and the laundering instructions. Turning this corset to its side, you can see it's a four panel pattern, one, two, three, four, so eight panels total. For the construction of this, it looks as if the uh, fashion fabric and the canvas were flat lined together. The panels were assembled with a top stitch, so it is indeed stitched twice uh, between the panels here. And then external boning channels were laid down to cover those seam allowances. And on the inside here, you can also see there is an exposed waist tape internally. Uh, this is a black cotton twill tape right there, three quarters of an inch wide, and it extends between panels one and two right there, all the way to the back by the grommets here. The binding in this corset is made from bias strips of this same black silk uh, diamond brocade here. It is machine stitched on the outside and on the inside as well. Uh, you can see that it has six garter tabs, three on each side here. And you can see on the outside, there's a tiniest little top stitch on this binding, but it's very neatly done. Taking a look at the modesty panel here, you can see that it is separate from the rest of the corset and stiffened. It's finished in the same black diamond brocade on the outside and the cotton canvas on the inside here. Uh, looking at its length, it is about uh, 10 and a half inches long by about five inches wide. And uh, just like with the other modesty panel that I showed in the corselet review, it has two quarter inch wide uh, steel bones that are going in a crisscross fashion, as well as two other steel bones running down vertically in this panel. And there are no bones going horizontally. This is just binding that's sewn on, but it still somewhat helps with uh, preventing any sort of crumpling or collapsing when you're lacing down your corset. And there's no real modesty placket on the knob side of the busk here, but there is a tiny little bit of a top stitch, just about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, so when you're putting on this corset, you do have to make sure that your shirt isn't caught between the two sides of the busk. But once uh, everything is tucked in properly, you will not see any gap uh, between the busk there because that tiny little uh, top stitch there that recesses the busk just a teeny little bit, uh, that makes sure that everything is covered in the center front. The busk in this corset is 10 and a half inches long and it's a standard flexible busk half an inch wide on each side with five loops and pins all equidistantly spaced. Additionally, there is a half inch wide flat steel bone on either side of the busk here to help further reinforce it and keep that center front flat. This corset has a total of 18 steel bones, nine on each side. So like I said before, it's double boned on the seams here and it looks like they are all quarter inch wide flat steel bones on the seams. Uh, this one that is in between panels two and three there that moves over the hip. These seem to be pre-bent a little bit just to give you a little bit more of that hip spring right there. Um, so like I said, two, four, six, those are all quarter inch wide flat steel bones. Another two quarter inch wide flats by the grommets in the back and 
like I said before, the half inch wide flat steel bone by the busk there. Here's a close up of the grommets. There are a total of 28 of them in this corset, 14 on each side. They are a size double zero. Uh, they are two part grommets finished in black here, which is a nice touch because it goes with the rest of the corset. All of them are holding in quite nicely. In the back, you can see that they have a nice wide washer. There are a few splits in these grommets here in the back, but they don't seem to catch on the laces. So as long as it doesn't affect the function and the, the lacing up of this corset and it doesn't damage either the corset or the laces, then I'm perfectly fine with this. Um, so I once again, I don't see any sort of um, fraying or coming out of the grommets here. And for the laces themselves, they are 3 8 of an inch wide, black, flat, uh, polyester, double-faced satin ribbon here uh, so they are the same uh, texture on both sides they're very strong almost uh, impossible to break here and um, they hold the bows well they have a nice flat profile if I wanted to wear it underneath clothing and they seem to glide well through the grommets but they're not too too slippery in the past I noticed that when I do lace corsets with a ribbon they tend to be a little bit more slippery but I think uh, the sheer number of grommets in this corset as well as the way that it was laced in this sort of basket weave or tennis shoe style way of lacing it, I think that contributes a lot to how easy this corset is to lace up. Um, because when I do the typical like X's over, X's under, uh, either the, the normal bunny ears or the inverted bunny ears way of lacing corsets, if it has a larger grommet and very smooth laces like ribbon laces, I notice that um, especially if the bones are quite bendy in the back, then they, it might have a tendency to bow outward or bow inward. But with these corsets, I find that to, to not be so much the case. So even though this actual style of lacing up your corset does cause a little bit more friction on the back edges in the, of the fabric of the corset, um, I'm thinking of adopting this style of lacing for a lot of my corsets that have the, the uh, satin ribbon lacing anyways, just because this corset was so easy and you know trouble free to lace up. The price of Dark Garden Signature Line Cinchers starts at $315 if you just like it in a plain black poplin. And uh, it's available in waist sizes from 18 up to 38. If you'd like it finished in the same sort of silk black diamond brocade like this, it is $365. So this concludes my review of the standard size cincher from Dark Garden Signature Line. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you did, remember to please click that like button and help support this channel. As always, if you have any questions or comments about this corset or Dark Garden in general, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to get back to you and I will see you all for the next video. Bye!